The Delay 1 is a simple delay device that offsets incoming audio by a certain amount. And you can dial in by how many in time units with this number box here, also with this manual setting on top and also here with the beat delay offset where you can, you know, offset more earlier and uh, more later. And this number box here is interesting because it's synchronized to your BPM uh, of your transport. So when you dial in here, 120 B BPM, right? It's uh, changing accordingly. So this one here delays basically by 16 nodes. So one is one 16 nodes, two is two 16 nodes, three 16 nodes, and so on. So um, if you have the feedback down and also the mix all the way up, it just offsets audio um, to a later state. So three 16 nodes, basically. If you don't want to synchronize here the delay by, um, yeah, synchronize to the BPM, you can also switch here to manual mode. So then it becomes inactive or disabled here. As you can see, it's grayed out. Now we can use here the time delay, which is seconds and milliseconds. And then you can offset the audio basically for, uh, yeah, it starts with 10 milliseconds. That's the lowest as you can go with this. And the highest is, let's see, um, it's probably five seconds exactly. So you can offset the audio here by five seconds. Double click and you go back to the initial default value. If you switch this back on to synchronized mode, you can also um, use now here this uh, beat delay offset. That's, that's in percentage, so you can say uh, one 16 note offset and also 33% um, earlier. So you can use this here maybe to int integrate some kind of swing if you modulate this back and forth all the time so you make the delay a bit swing right if you want to um, so you can do that and below that we have just normal regular um, high pass controls low pass controls just to filter out audio content if you want to a mixing knob where you can bring in the um, dry signal and combine it with the delayed or offset signal then we have a feedback so you can create instead of having just a delay you can make it like sounding like an echo where you have multiple delayed taps ringing out over time slowly um, you can do that too and you can also go here to up to 100 which is basically infinite delays or infinite delay taps or infinite echo taps however you want to call it a delay for me is basically just delaying the audio one time and then using a feedback here it becomes an echo where you have like this echoing um, slowly degrading sound happening so this is basically a delay and this is an echo more or less um, then we have a feedback chain fx chain where you can put in some additional fx some audio effects from Bitwig studio or maybe a vst device to uh, alter the signal in the feedback loop so this works like a normal echo basically you have audio coming in then the audio goes out into the fx chain here and then if you dial up the feedback the output of that is going back into the input of the feedback delay right with a certain um a certain gain amount here and then it becomes a bit quieter goes back in the feedback chain and so on and it's a feedback loop going in and out of this device until it's not audible anymore. So this is how this works. And you can put in here basically some effects to alter the sound. But I'll show you in a minute how this sounds. This is just the, you know, the overview how this device works. So um, to give you some examples, um, maybe increase here also the, the sizing of this. So, so we have here just, just an synthesizer with just some sounds that's better and now we have this delay device here and then we bring this in and just play sounds you can hear it's just as before for you at least but for me when i press the keyboard it takes some time until i hear the sound because i delay it here already you can see the input sound here 
and then it takes some time and then you hear the output here because it's delayed by three uh, 16 notes right if i bring in the dry signal you can hear the delay but if you have the mix knob all the way up to 100 percent, it's just offset for you also here the filter is all the way up um, so there's basically no low cut and also barely a uh, high cut so it's a complete path through uh through the delay one here without any changes whatsoever only the time offset is happening in in this configuration i use this most of the times for bass lines when i just want to offset the bass line maybe to an offbeat state or maybe for percussions where i have say a lot of percussion lines that are on the beat all the time and i want to offset certain tracks to for certain amounts i use this delay device because it's pretty handy for that and it's easy to do but maybe i'll show you this later on um so here we have a pretty 460 notes delay and you can also dial in now the feedback what i told you so now we have basically echo And if you put this at 100% or 0 dB, it never stops. It's an infinite echoing yeah, device that always plays the de delay buffer here over and over. It takes some time until it rings out. But you can hear it slightly alters the signal a bit. If you put this here on 16, 16 notes, now if you clear the buffer here, with going back to zero, so now the buffer is clean, um, you can even kind of use that as a small little looper device or recording device. So it records uh, basically a buffer up to 16, 16 notes, which is pretty long, so you can play some uh, patterns. And it plays this buffer over and over. Until you bring the feedback back down to 0 dB and it clears the buffer basically. And if you um, maybe go a bit lower than that, maybe 0, minus 1 or 2 dB, something like that, you have basically also a looper, but the patterns slightly go out over time or fade out over time so you can use this maybe also for live purposes where you play certain patterns live and over time they slowly fade out and you bring in new patterns you play on top of that right so it's a um, not only just the echo device or offsetting audio you can also use this as a looper or live looper kind of device Sure, you are a bit limited with the 16, 16 notes, but you know, limitations make you uh, creative. So you can try to do that. Actually did a lot of times uh, when I do some um, improvisations on top of my tracks. So here I'm using a quantizer basically um, to quantize my MIDI notes to the BPM here. So everything I play is basically quantized so I can play easier. So maybe let's play here some higher notes. And then I play some lower notes below that. You can hear the top notes I played earlier are slowly fading out because of this feedback setting here. And the newer notes, the bass notes, are basically much louder because they are played later. So it's a perfect device for um, live improvisations or um, 
this kind of stuff, right? Or maybe when you create a track, you're in the creation, uh, creational phase and uh, you want to improvise with something, you can use that basically um, to come up with certain type of um, patterns. And it's also fun to do. So it's also a live looper basically, not only a delay and an echo. Um, so then in here you can put in a pitch, um, pitch shifter basically. With the pitch shifter I explained earlier in another video, you can shift basically the incoming audio. And because we have this delay uh, feedback FX thing here, every time we pass basically this FX chain, we um, pitch up the audio signal by seven semitones maybe. Okay, so let's do that. We have here also feedback signal. So just plus play one note. Okay, so we go in, we delay the audio signal by 16, 16 notes, go into the feedback FX section here, pitch up by seven semitones, spit out the audio uh, at the back of the delay one, and also go back into the input, take this pitched up signal, delay it by 16, 16 notes, go back into F, uh, FX section here, and then use the pitched up signal and pitch it even more up, right? So this is what you hear, this going up in tonality or in pitch. So this can be also, um, yeah, a nice effect uh, on top of your track. Uh, seven semitones is maybe not that good for musicality. Maybe use pure octaves, right? So it's always the same note, just one octifier or one octave lower. You can also pull down yeah, the grain, which brings in a nice effect. Or you can do the trick I showed you also in the pitch shifter video. You can pitch shift shift up and also pitch shift down at the same time. And then maybe use here a random mod uh, to modulate the grain because I really like how that sound. And I use two different um, random mods here to have a different seat for the modulation also. Yeah. Not sure how the sounds. So you can create kind of more like glitchy effects or granular effects or however you want to call it. Uh, so micro status in there. So a lot of options also with the feedback FX here. Also nice, you can use the plur device which is just an all pass device and it's also um, yeah, a basic uh, module of reverbs so you can diffuse the signal as yes, you can create some kind of reverbs with that. Let's try that. Uh, maybe more blur. Maybe bring the mix down here. Yeah. I need to find the right timings here, but you get the idea. You can diffuse the signal a bit. And create some kind of um, yeah, reverbs with that. You can hear it's more diffused, it's more like a reverb, maybe different with delay timing here. Yeah. 
So you can still hear the delay echoing in the background and you want to completely remove that if you want to have a clean reverb. So you need perfect timings for all of these things. But maybe you don't care so much to have a clean reverb and you still like how this sounds. So you can come up with your own reverbs. Maybe a chorus in there could be also nice. Um, slow modulation. So yeah, something you can, can try out. Yeah, maybe like this, or like this, and pull down the feedback. So yeah, uh, if you put something in the feedback FX chain, you have to make sure that you don't surpass the feedback volume. If you actually <clears throat> amplify the signal a bit more, then it goes in. So the output is higher than the input of the feedback FX chain then the feedback becomes louder and louder, right? Until, um, yeah, until you run out of um, tinnitus. <laughs> so yeah, you can also create some kind of weird reverbs with that. So like I said, delay one is a fairly interesting uh, device because first it's simple and second you can still do a lot of things with that you can offset audio you can create echoes with that you can create reverbs and some weird glitchy uh, granular effects um, all just with one device and in combination with the rest of the Bitwig devices it's a yeah fairly fairly powerful device <laughs> 